Hello, Stereo Azimuth here, and now we're going to talk about tube amps. And I have four uh, EL84 type tube amps, although I think one takes a EL184, basically. Uh, but it, it's a very similar uh, tube. You'll understand when, when I talk about it. But um, this is like... This is like a really good like headphone amp, um, like kind of mid tier, sort of um, sort of a, a tube off, if you will, because I like never again will I probably have all four of these amps in like under one roof, and I went through all of them so I can tell you guys all about them. So let's go through the list and. Um, talk about them. So let me switch to my weirdo camera here. Uh, I got my desktop camera. Uh, let's see if I can switch. There's my arm. But this right here, this is the first um, amp. This is what kind of like started off this whole thing. It's the Hagerman Tuba. Uh, it is basically a parafeed uh, amplifier. Um, so there's no, and I'm sorry if I'm making people sick here, but basically it's just two EL84s uh, that is powering the whole thing. It is transformer coupled. Um, all of these are. They're, none of these amps are um, like output transformerless. They all have an output transformer on them. They're basically all good for high and low impedance headphones. Although the power for planers, like some planers, may require more power than what can be delivered through uh, some of these amps that, I, that I'll get to in the, in the actual like descriptions of everything. So it does have a high and low uh, like output. So these are the different taps on the output transformer, but depending on if you have high or low um, like impedance headphones. Uh, yes, you can plug like high impedance into the low uh, output for like a lower output, but um, you know I, pro I probably wouldn't like recommend it. But either which either which way, it's there. The it does work for uh, like high uh, high impedance. Excuse me, if you have low impedance uh, headphones. All right, and then moving on here, we have the shortest way SW51 Plus. Um, this is a like sort of super best audio friends special, if you will. And I'll try to fix the camera without making too everybody too sick. Um, it also has high and low um, outputs for you know low impedance, high impedance. Uh, this has a different knob than most of what everybody is expecting, and that's because this is a very early model. Nothing has really changed from the design of this model versus what you can buy today. You know, I'll provide a link where you can go um, purchase one of these, although the price has uh, increased because of um, like the export from um, from Russia. Uh, so that's just kind of how things are. The plus, if you see it, if you see this amp also referred to as a SW51 or a SW51 plus, the only difference is the actual volume potentiometer. The volume pot on the plus is an Alps RK50 and the other ones have like a CTS type pot, um, like very similar than what you would find in the, uh, I think the uh, CTS is also the same one that's in the bottlehead crack. So, but a lot of people, that's a popular upgrade, is to upgrade the um, the volume pot. Um, but yes, most of the if fifty ones, he's like decided the the plus was so popular, just forget the regular, um, you know, uh, mod. And I believe all of them now are coming with uh, with Alps pots. Moving on, oh, oh, and this is the one with the EF-184 uh, tubes. Um, they're actually like a Russian tube, um, but they're very similar, like, type of pentode uh, tube. The next is an oddball kind of amp. The next two are kind of more, I would say, oddballs. They're, they're more known for their speaker amplifiers. 
Uh, this one is a line magnetic mini. Uh, what is this? Uh, eight four. What does that say? Eight four seven A or something like that. Um, and basically, and I'll take I'll take the cage off so you can see as well. Then it has actually two small, you know, tubes and then two. Uh, two taller tubes. So these are actually um, 12AX7s. Well, what's in there now are 12AT7s, which I'll get to in a minute. And then the, then there's um, EL84s uh, for the power. So, you know, left channel, right channel. You do notice this selector has phone speaker. Uh, and there are speaker taps on the back. So you can use this as a small, like, 3 watt amplifier um but i'll get to the quality of that in a little bit there's no higher low impedance just a regular phone there is no higher low gain but yeah that's the line magnetic mini i'll just refer to it as the line magnetic mini very small uh very very mini and then the next is one of my favorites uh the quicksilver audio headphone amp no model name no numbers no designation no nothing special just the quicksilver audio headphone amp he the the quicksilver does not make another type of headphone amp they're they're not more than one so it it that that's just what that's how it's referred to um they quicksilver audio very well known uh sort of in the hi-fi community um for hand-built tube preamplifiers and um, tube amplifiers uh they got started in california back in the uh the early 80s uh making hand-built uh like tube amps and uh nothing really special about this one as far as the controls there's no higher low impedance just a uh, power switch and um volume knob so not much the the tubes there is no cover for this so you can easily access the tubes from the top um you can even see the big transformer and the big like capacitor uh like in the back sticking out um very sort of industrial but kind of sleek hi-fi looking is what i would call it um very very cool um these are 12 ax7s in the front although these are not these particular tubes are not um, I actually, and I'll turn it to the side so you can see, actually have some adapters uh, because these are uh, six HNPs uh, or whatever. These are like 6922 variants. Um, so, yeah, they, they are, these are like Russian 6 and one ps are what these are. Um, and you can use the adapter, uh, for the 12 AX sevens on this. You cannot use the 12 AX seven adapter for six, nine, two, two tubes on the line magnetic. Uh, these require more heater current, um, which the line magnetic could not handle. I put it in, I turned it on and the light just wouldn't come on. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna turn it off. Because I know the LED is uh, powered like off of the um, off of the heater, uh, you know, heater tap off the transformer. So I was like, okay, we'll just turn that off. It's not gonna work. So you can use 12 uh, AT7s, uh, AU7s, uh, you know, whatever AY7s. Any of the 12A, there's 12AX. X is going to give you the highest amount of gain. Then the next is the T. Then the next is like the Y. And the next is like the U. Um, so they go down. So you can look them up. They have different, um, uh, the amount of gain. The If you want, the reason why you would lower the gain is for lower distortion. And, you know, uh, just for like cleaner sound, basically, because a lot of 12 AX sevens, even though the tubes may be great, um, they're still not the, the best uh, uh, tubes, lower noise, lower distortion you're going to find on like something like an AT seven uh, or six, nine, two, two, if you can get it for the, the Quicksilver, which is my recommendation. 
But let's go all the way back to the tuba. So, the tuba, uh, just so everyone knows as well, this one has like the wood panels. Now, you can order this without the wood panels. Um, for about $100 cheaper than what you can, just the amp itself. The sound of this is uh, very wide, very clean, very clear, um, not real pushy. It, 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 it is kind of got that tube lushness, like you know you're listening to a tube amp in the mids, just like very... Um, and, and it's very sort of like light and very sort of like, I don't know. I, I always get the sense of like a butterfly or something like that. Like it's, it's just very, uh, clean, um, not a lot of tube lush lows. So if you're looking for like a tube bloom, this is not really the amp. This is more of a, um, tube cleanliness. Um, it is not super powerful, so I would only recommend it for like your lower impedance, uh, like high efficiency headphones, or I did try it on Sennheisers. I did try it on HD 650s, HD 600s, HD 800s, and they had enough power, but they're not going to like knock your socks off with volume. I mean, even when I was listening and listening to tracks that I like, I mean, I had to crank it. But if I was just sitting here, you know, working and I just wanted some music on, I still had to have the volume up like probably higher than a lot of people would um, would expect. And yes, I was in the, the high output mode with the high impedance headphones like the Sennheisers. When I went into the low, um, the low end just got too uh, sort of, um, excuse me, sort of muddy and uncontrolled. And I didn't really like it at all. It, it was just sort of er, everything kind of got mushy. Uh, not really bloomy, but it just everything started to like kind of mush um, together and not really clean and defined. Here it was very clean and defined. I still wouldn't call it like a fast amp for like EDM or something like that, even though that I called it like light. It, But it is perfect for like bluegrass, for jazz, um classical music, uh, acoustic music. I mean, light rock. Um, it, it, it was very joyous. It never got congested at all, even in complicated passages and just kept that cleanliness all the way through. Um, so, but I wouldn't really call it like an aggressive amp, um, at all. So if you're listening to like hard rock or something like that and want something that really jams, I, you know, this is probably not going to be the amp for you. you probably want something uh, solid state anyway. But, um, but yes, this was just like very, very enjoyable, very, very light. About the only real weakness that I found of it is the, is the actual volume because you don't have as much volume. And the low end was very sort of like, tight there wasn't a lot of low end bloom um to it so it was really kind of like especially when i went to, compared to the other two amps it wasn't really compared to other solid state amps but compared to the other two amps that i had in this this collection and i did try some different tubes i tried uh it comes standard with the mullard reissue tubes and i uh these are actually really really great tubes for this amp um, I tried putting some tongue scram, uh, EL 84s in it It maybe improved a little bit, but I, I, I mean, I wouldn't put super mega buck, um, like tubes in this because, um, I don't know the, the way that it, the way that the solid state and the, in the, um, sort of like the circuitry of the, um, I was about to say circulatron, but no, the circuitry of the pair feed. Um, you know, the tubes are, you know, very sort of precision, uh, sort of instruments. And so like other tubes are not going to really make that much of a difference. So, I, I mean, I really like the, the stock tubes on this. I don't think that you can really, uh, do any better. I did try the Genelec, um, gold lion tubes. Uh, these, these tubes, they, um, uh, and these were also really great, uh, tubes in there. Although these, I mean, but these are new also like new production 
uh, new production tubes. But basically what I'm saying is no reason to chase after like NOS, like Megabuck, EL84s. I think you're fine sticking with uh, like newer production stuff. The next in line amp that we have is the, the SW51. And much has been written about this amp. I mean, there's, there's so much uh, is very popular um, uh, thing. Um, oh, let me go back to the tuber ones quick. Right quick. Another interesting thing is that it runs off 15 volt DC uh, power. Um, I, I do have a noise nuke, which does um, like filter out uh, sort of like the, the, the nasties of the switching power supply. And that didn't improve it. So uh, if you have a 15 volt DC, you know, um, linear power supply, that would probably also uh, work really well. It's only 15 volts DC, like one amp, I think is, or maybe one and a half amp, something like that. Um, and then, yeah, just the input. I'll, I'll show you the back of these as well, so you can, uh, so you can know. So moving on again, SW51. So much has been written about it. Um, so much has been said. It is also a very clean amplifier. Not a lot of like low end um, bloom here. It's very sort of like controlled. Um, but compared to the tuba, the shortest way, this one has a little bit more warmth on the low end and more power than the tuba. Although it might not be as wide and the presentation was not as like deep. So there's some little bit of trade-offs between the two. Um, but this one is probably more versatile in that it has more power, right? Like it, it, it actually has like more sort of gain, like, you know, more output. And the uh, everything else was just like presented, like no matter what type of music that I played, it sounded great through this. Um, it, it also, I mean, the low end isn't, uh, you know, some people will say it doesn't have that tube low end bloom, but it's very sort of like neutral in that way. Um, but you're also getting like the benefit of the tube. There's no like solid state nasties or, or anything else. It has a linear p uh, power supply. It uses a IEC cable in the back. And, um, I just found it like really, really great to listen to. And it's a, it's a great all around amp that, you know, you can uh, definitely have, I, you know, it depends on what you want, whether you want like more um, sort of clarity or really want like more versatility, I think is what you're going to get with this. Um, I have like some more detailed um, like descriptions. Hold on one second. So the SW51, um, you know, still has a good center image. It is still open and airy than most solid state amps. And um, sorry, my my phone is going off. Um, but basically, it, it you know the thing that mostly is impressive about this amp is the uh, is its transparency. So it just sounds very sort of uh, transparent because it has, you know, like a short, like audio path, uh, just like two tubes and that's all you're, you know, going through. Um, it, it's not real slammy or, uh, like aggressive sounding. Um, you know, it does have some dynamic swing to it, but it's not like, um, that forward and in your face, like solid state amps. It's still like kind of a tube amp still going to have some you know, very sort of polite, but you know, um, and, and after a while, like when, it, when you first listen, you're like, wait, this is kind of like a solid state amp. And then you go back to a solid state amp and you're like, no, no, it's clearly not a solid state amp. It's clearly has more, uh, sort of clarity in it than you would find in, um, in some of the other, other amps. So, um, but yeah, it's always surprising. Like I always, whenever I put in something, always surprising how, you know, things come through the, uh, the SW51. So I think it imparts like the least amount of, 
uh, like sort of tube personality over all these um, all these amps. Um, so more of the you know sort of actual recording, and that's why a lot of people like them. That's why it's very very well liked. Um, so, but we're gonna move on to the line magnetic mini. Um, and I'll try to sp not spend too much time on this because I, I didn't really like this amp, um, whatsoever. The, the biggest sin of emission here is the emission of the low end, meaning it had none. The top end was also very sort of harsh and grainy and sounded more like a solid state amp, no matter what tubes I used. It did warm up things when I used uh, AT, you know, AT7s or, or more warmer tubes. Um, and it, it never really did a whole lot. When I first plugged it in, I was just like kind of impressed with the width and the clarity. And it does have some width. I mean, um, the, the stereo separation is very good. And it does sound very clean. But as I played more and as I started comparing amps, I was like, where is all the low end coming from? where is it gone where is the baseline gone and i i just i i i don't know i mean it was like i felt like everything was rolled off uh at like 50 hertz and like nothing else was heard below that last i mean it's just very it, it, all the bass sounded very thin so it's, I, I mean i i mean it's a very expensive amp it's very you know Excuse me, it looks very good, looks very nice. I just did not get along with it. And then the speaker amps. So people are like, well, what about the speakers? What about the speakers? They can do speakers. Speaker out sounded terrible. Um, it also sounded like the headphone out just even more so. Like it sounded like a Class D amp. Uh, like the, the, the first generation Class D amps where it was like harsh and 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 flat soundstage and and sound was just like thrown at you i mean it, it sounded like the amp was under strain when i hooked it up to my speakers like my jbl monitors and and uh they're only 87 db efficient i mean they're not anything um um uh, i mean maybe if you had some higher efficient uh speakers maybe that were more close to 92 93 but i didn't think that much db would make i mean I, you know, so yeah, I wasn't very impressed with it, um, with either the headphone out or the speaker out. Um, so, I mean, it does take tubes. It is a tube amp. It is transformer coupled, but yeah, um, I w wasn't very impressed. Um, I just thought the ro low end very much rolled off. So I'm actually going to move this amp. Because I want to make room for this granddaddy amp here that is amazing. And that is the Squicksilver Audio headphone amp. This is super powerful. This could pretty much drive high to mid efficiency planar headphones in a tube amp. This is amazing sounding. We're talking width. We're talking depth. Uh, we're talking details, plankton, all that kind of fun stuff we can talk about in this amp. It does have some tube low end bloom. There is some like kind of like low end, um, you know, tube stuff happening, depending on what tubes that you have in it. Newer production tubes, the tubes got a little like tighter on the low end. Um, the older NOS tubes, like the Tung SRAMs and and uh, the Amperexes, I mean, those were uh, or like maybe I have some mini watts, but anyway, those were more um, like a, a little more uh, low end, uh, bloomy um, than say the the Muller tubes. The Muller tubes actually sounded really good in here, and I would think that these were also taken, uh, like, w would take new production tubes very well. Uh, I haven't tried Pizvane tubes. I don't even know how to pronounce it, Piz Pizvane. Um, but that's my next step because I think that those would do um, really well in here, although I'm still liking the 
tongue scram tubes because they have such a clear top end and they have just a little bit of uh, tube bloominess that is just very enjoyable. Uh, some people may not like the LED light because it's blue. I'm not going to plug it in um, and annoy everybody, but just know that it's a blue LED. I know some of you don't like that. I'll turn around the back. Uh, you just have a fuse, um, IEC, and the inputs. Oh, I said I was going to show the back of the SW51. Um, I don't want to block out the name but of who this used to belong to, but there's really um there's really like not much back here just the switch and the input so um so we'll go back here um so let me turn this back around so and then yeah i mean it does have a serial number this one was 82 so that probably hasn't been around a, a while. This one's uh, a, a little bit old. There are uh, sort of pictures online of it. And if I have a picture of the actual circuit board, these are all, all handmade. Um, very easy to get to the bottom. If you want to make some modifications, change out, you know, some capacitors. I've seen some people change out this big guy here. Um but I, I think all, I mean, and it's doing some crazy stuff because, I mean, instead of resistors, I saw some like lamps in there because, you know, you can use a lamp as a resistor, no rule against it. Um, and it's just amazing, amazing sound. Like, um, I, I plug in, like, I was just, you know, sitting there thinking like, okay, yeah, this, this amp sounds deep. This amp sounds fine. And then I'll plug in the Quicksilver and go, oh my gosh, it's just so expansive but then also it has this just authority over the volume it's such a sort of almost slammy tube amp i mean almost too much especially when it first came to me because it had 12 ax7s and so i was like man we need to really lower the gain because you know my volume knob is like way down here you know i'm like god there's way too much gain i need to lower the gain so, like, I try the AT7s. That helped a lot. Then I was like, I need to I need to go even lower. I mean, AT7s, I think, have a gain factor of, like, 60. 12AX7s have a gain factor of 100. I was just like, 6922 tubes have, like, a gain factor of, like, 30 or 33. I was like, yeah, that's where we need to be. We need to be even lower. And so I got these adapters, and I, you know, put them in, put the... Um, and I just tried some Russian six and one P's and they, you know, they sounded amazing. Um, like more, even, even more sort of details, even, even more sort of like things came out, like the noise floor just like dropped, uh, a little bit more and like the width and the clarity just got like that much better. So... Uh, I haven't even experimented with trying different um, 6922 tubes, which you could probably do. So I haven't even got that far. Um, so I, because I'm just so happy with, with these, with the way they sound. I mean, it just like absolutely sounds amazing. So, but yeah, the personality can change a little bit more with the Quicksilver amp than other amps because it's a little more handmade there's less transistor, less silicone, um, sort of, you know, parts inside. Um, so, um, and it, it looks, it, I mean, it doesn't look extremely complicated, but it's a lot more simple design than say the pair feed amp, um, or probably even the SW 51. Um, because yeah, it's, it's more simple, like just straight, you know, 12 X seven gain and then EL 84s. Um, it, like I said, it doesn't have speaker taps. It is rather small, but like this thing, I think you can pick up for like right at a thousand or maybe right under and like on the used market. Um, I mean, you could probably get, you know, maybe 700, 750 for one of these and it's, it's every, it's worth every bit of it. 
um, I mean, even at brand new, um, for a thousand is, is fantastic because really I think you have to go up to, you know, something crazy like Donald North audio or, uh, go up to, you know, something Eddie current, you know, like 300 B tubes or something like that. Um, so that's why you put these like in the mid tier, like what other, you know, like options do I have? If I want, if I got Sennheiser HD six fifties or I've got, uh, HD eight hundreds and I want a good amp that has some good low end and has, you know, two, uh, has enough amplification for them. Like, what am I going to get? Um, you know, because those scale very well, meaning that like, you can like with better amplification and, and, and better source of gear, you can hear, uh, like a, a lot more things. I mean, um, so they, they, they do kind of scale with your gear to a certain point. And, and, and I think that the, like this amp is, you know, one of those amps. Like I, I think that, you know, the clarity and, um, like the, the depth and, and just the sheer enjoyment um, you know, and, and I listen to all types of music with this. I listen to EDM. I listen to um, classical jazz, uh, you know, fusion, um, progressive rock. I mean, it just sounded, um, you know, amazing that you can listen to something like, you know, porcupine tree as well as like bluegrass music, as well as like, um, you know, classical music. I mean, it was just everything I threw at it just sounded, um, you know, amazing. And one of those amps that you just want to like keep listening to and keep listening to and keep listening to, um, because there's stuff in there that you, you know, haven't heard. And even when I, I just sit down and listen to it and I'm like, Oh yeah, I guess I'll listen to this today. And I just sit there and go, wow. I mean, listen to this album on this is like a new, um, sort of experience. So I know that's like high praise for this, but I really can't find much fault with this amp about the only fault that I can really find with it is that, you know, it may have, you know, too much lows, uh, sometimes for the HD six fifties. Um, but you know, the HD eight, hundred never had a problem with it. HD 600 never had a problem with it. I mean, and most of the time on HD 650, depending on what album that I'm playing, um, you know, might not have a problem with it. Um, but you know, some things, yeah, might sound, uh, like a little muddy, uh, depending on what source you have, like through, uh, like I said, through like six fifties or through other things. I did try some of my planers through it. I have some, uh, the only planers I really have are the ether CXs, the Dan Clark audio, like drop special ether CX and I mean, it powered them just fine. I mean, that is a very, like, that's kind of an efficient, um, like planer, but it's still like, you know, amplified it just as well. Um, and it still brought in, you know, it, it brought in some extra, like kind of, you know, low end that some solid stadiums like don't have. And, it still had the width and all that kind of stuff. Other solid stadiums, though, still sounded, uh, quote unquote, faster and could like make that thing move and had more sort of grippy power over the, you know, that, that planer, that thin planer driver. And I prefer that sound. Um, so I usually went with that. But if you want it to kind of slow down and kind of get a little more silky, then, then yeah, you could you know, I could definitely use, uh, you can definitely use that amp for it. Um, if, if that's what you're going for, but yeah, I think that, um, it has, but it has just like a ton, a ton, a ton of power. Um, and I also didn't really experiment with trying different 12 AX or excuse me, 12 AT sevens. Um, you could probably try those in here, uh, as well without going with adapters. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, and just be careful. Everything's exposed. There's no cage. Um, it does get hot. So make sure you keep it well ventilated and keep it away from stuff. The tuba, the tubes got, um, hot a little bit. 
but not that much. Uh, you just stay away from the tubes and you'll be fine. Uh, just don't touch like the actual tube part. The amp never really got super hot. So anyway, that is that is the tube. That is the tube amp off. Um, I you know I really could have just done it on these three because the line magnetic was was kind of disappointing um, to me and and um, you know I'm sorry to uh, to them and 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 um, so but like. I, I, I don't really know what to say. When we have these choices here, uh, this one, I mean, the tuba, I think, is like six ninety nine. I think this one's uh, like seven ninety nine. Like I said, I'll, I'll post up all the links, and the prices will change, but this one's close to like 700 and then the Quicksilver is like about a 1000 um, if not just over a 1000 So um, just in... And, and, and and for what it is, for being just like a couple hundred dollars more than these other two amps, it is absolutely worth that amount of money. And then if you can find one on the used market for a couple hundred, you know, like less, uh, then it is even more fantastic um, because, yeah, you're getting a, a, a discount. And I wouldn't really worry about like longevity of these amps. I mean, uh, will last like a uh, long time because we can always change out the tubes. And then, uh, you know, capacitors and stuff like that. Like the Quicksilver, like I said, it's easy to work on. So you can always like change out caps and stuff like that. It really reminds me of like an old like HH Scott or old like Fisher uh, amp. I mean, that's kind of the way that it sounds. I mean, that is that is the classic definition of how that that amp sort of sounds. So hopefully, hopefully everybody is a little more aware of like all these amps and how they sound. And um, you got a more clearer picture. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please give me a like and thumb up and, and subscribe. I have uh, some more stuff coming your way, some more reviews, some more DIY stuff. Um, so, yeah, so come on back. Uh, I promise I'll, I'll have some more and um, uh, some more fun stuff for everybody. So, and if you have any suggestions on stuff, uh, please let me know. I'm always looking for, you know, new and fun things for what you want to see. So anyway, I'm Stereo Asmuth and you guys, I'll talk to you later.